Hello, everybody. Thank you, Alex. How are you all doing? Coffee break is not far away. You're nearly there. <laughs> Keep going. OK, so yes, as Alex says, I am really passionate about bringing people together from across sectors to find new solutions to old problems. And my career started developing cutting-edge technologies for clients such as Nike and Virgin. And our success was actually measured by a business dashboard. It told us whether we'd sold more products for Nike or if we got more Facebook likes for Virgin. I needed to do more for our planet, so I left and I joined the Zoological Society of London to lead the Conservation Technology Lab. There we created bespoke tools for our scientists who are monitoring biodiversity all over the world. And the data revealed some catastrophic results. Over the last 40 years, we've lost 60% of our world's wildlife. This is devastating, and we need to speed up conservation action. So this got us thinking, why don't we have a conservation dashboard, something that's global and dynamic and can actually give us a near real-time view of wildlife across the planet? There's no shortage of data, and for wildlife, this often comes from camera traps. Conservationists love them. These small digital cameras are deployed in the field. They have a passive infrared sensor that detects motion and snaps a picture of wildlife as they move past. We deploy them in grids of around 30, and they help us survey wildlife populations in the areas where we work. Are numbers going up or down? What are the threats they face? Where are the animals moving to? We urgently need this information to help us take action, to help inform policy change as well. But the data, it gets messy. It's blurry. The cameras often misfire. I mean, can anybody tell me what's in these images from Croatia and also from Borneo? No? Well, in the left, we have a uh, very camera-shy uh, wild boar from Croatia. And on the right, we have a very fast-moving collared mongoose. It's tricky, right? Currently, scientists have to manually label every image one by one, and this can take months. With each camera trap survey generating hundreds of thousands of images, and only 5% of them actually containing the target species or endangered species that you're looking for, it's like looking for a needle in a haystack. And these surveys are happening all around the world, and it's causing a bottleneck, and it's wasting our time when we should be out there saving wildlife. We need faster data analytics. Citizen science applications like iNaturalist and Zooniverse are part of the solution. They crowdsource image labeling from the public, asking them to classify batches of archive data from the comfort of their armchairs. But the process is still slow. So whilst at ZSL, we created an application called Instant Wild. This serves live video and images direct from key habitats straight to the smartphone of users. The active community has made over 3 million identifications, and we hope that with enough people power, we can speed up a live stream of labeled camera trap data. This year, ZSL and National Geographic will launch a new partnership to scale Instant Wild to more sites across conservation areas and to a bigger audience. But many of these key habitats have no mobile coverage, and they have no connectivity to send real-time data. Instant Wild was actually one of the first projects to pioneer new hardware that could send real-time images via satellite. At ZSL, we secured a game-changing partnership with Iridium to offer conservationists an affordable satellite airtime rate. This made it possible for them to monitor wildlife in remote locations such as the Adelie penguin in Antarctica and the elusive night parrot in Australia. But what about machines? We've just heard about artificial intelligence, and that is, has revolutionary potential for wildlife monitoring. It can even help us you know, individually identify species such as giraffes from their patterns and also identify species in camera trap images. But there are still challenges. Out of all the data science scientists in the world, there's a very limited number that can actually create the kind of advanced AI deep learning models that are needed for this type of work. So to help democratize AI for all conservationists, we started working with Google to help advance their cloud AutoML tool. 
This new breakthrough technology allows conservationists and anyone to create machine learning models, advanced models, without having to code. With no machine learning expertise, our team was able to create advanced training models that could label unlabeled tra camera trap data. And we were really, really surprised with the results. We saw 90% classification accuracy for all those species that had over 800 training images. We got very excited about the potential of AI to speed up our data science work from months to just days. But this also highlighted the need to share large volumes of training data. So what's next? Well, the volume of data is only going to increase, as we've seen today. And by 2025, the IDC predicts that 30% 30 30 of that will be real time. So the big questions are, how do we share data? How do we share that training data? How do we collaborate to refine models for different geogra geographies and different species sets? How do we host it and manage it? But what's the responsible and ethical use of AI for conservation? To help, we formed a new collaboration called the Wild Labs Tech Hub, working with the UK government, wildlabs.net, seven conservation organizations, Amazon, Microsoft, and the Open Data Institute to think about how we can advocate data exchange and how we can accelerate artificial intelligence for conservation. We're piloting a new concept called Data Trust. This will help organizations hopefully share data whilst retaining trust. And this is one of the key barriers. I allowed you to actually check out wildlabs.net. We're working with this amazing community to actually look at the needs and the barriers to sharing data to help them overcome them for a range of different data types, such as audio recording, camera traps, and other different types. It's a vibrant online community connecting conservationists, scientists, data scientists, field teams in over 100 countries around the world. Longer term, we really see machine learning playing a key part in helping us get a real-time view of the pulse of wildlife across the planet to give us that conservation dashboard and speed up our conservation work because time is running out. I'll leave you with this quote from Charles Darwin. Thank you.